All right, let's continue. Number 16, what is the domain of the function defined by that thing? Okay, you see a third root. It's a very ugly looking function. fx is equal to third root of 4x squared minus 1. Okay, two ways of solving this. One, if you, when, we, when they ask you, when the questions ask you about domain and range, the best option is you draw it with your calculator. Use your graphing calculator to graph, graph the function and then see how they look like. See which, you know, possible uh, x values and possible y values. Okay, so that will be the most secure way. But I'm going to use my intuitive method. Uh, my theory behind it is when you have an even root, a square root of x or fourth root of x or sixth root of x, graph, the domain only exists on the positive side. Why? Because you cannot have negative inside the square root, right? So only uh, the domain possible in even roots are the positive realms. Whereas if you have the odd roots, third root or fifth root or seventh root, we know that uh, positive as well as negative are possible, right? For example, if I had third root of negative 8, you know answer is negative 2, right? So I could have negative inside third root. So negative is okay inside. So what could this inside be? Anything you want to be. Can I get minus in there? Yes, you can. Can I get zero in there? Yes, you can. Can I get positive? Yes. So everything's possible, right? So when x, any number for x is possible, that means your domain is pretty much all real numbers, right? Anything's possible. So that will be my intuitive way of solving this question instead of punching this in the calculator. But for most of the students, uh, if you're not sure, you feel uncomfortable uh, doing this intuitive method, then uh, put this in your calculator, graph it, and see how it looks like. And then you will see that all real numbers are possible. Okay, 17. The half-life of radioactive substance is nine years. If 40 grams of substance exists initially, how much will it remain after 23.5 years? We gotta go with the half-life equation. Uh, half-life is a topic of exponential function, exponential decay to be exact. So I have an equation, y is equal to principal amount, which is 40 grams, and then half-life, so I'm gonna go half every time, right? Every time when? t divided by the half-life. Whatever they give you as a half-life, you gotta divide by that time. Right, so think about it. If, you, if the time becomes nine years, let's say, then nine over nine is one, right? So it becomes half, 40 will become 20. So that makes sense, right? So t divided by nine, or the half-life is the equation. So in this problem, for this problem, I think you just have to put this in the calculator. T, we want it for 23.5 years, divided by nine, put that ugly thing in your calculator, make sure you know you don't get confused with all that stuff. I When you put, the, put it in the calculator, I'll put the parentheses so that the nine doesn't get divided by the whole thing, if you know what I mean. But uh, sometime later on, I'll make another video about you know, how to use calculator and make sure you don't uh, make uh, mistakes there. But anyway, put this in your calculator, you'll get the answer. Number 17, answer should be 6.55 grams. Number 18, which of the following could be the quadratic equation? They want to know the equation when you have the integral coefficients having roots this and this. Remember earlier in the video, the different video that talked about the difference between roots and the, the factors? Yeah, so a lot of students make uh, mistakes here. Now, 3 plus i came out as a root. You know, x is equal to 3 plus i, right? So what that means was is that inside the factor form, it had to have a negative in the front. Get it? So here again, it had to have a negative when you got 3 minus i as your root. So this is what you want. I'm going to erase this part. So basically, you want to expand this. Uh, if you have a calculator, TI-89 or Inspire, you know, there's expand option on your function uh, F2 section on your calculator. Expand this. Put this in your calculator. Boom. It'll tell you one of these equations right there, right out. But let's say you didn't have that option of doing expand. Then what do I do? You got to do it by hand. Okay, let's do it by hand. Good exercise. X times X, X squared x times that thing, negative x times 3 minus i, 
multiply this negative again x times 3 plus i and then finally the last one negative negative makes a positive and then I got 3 plus i and 3 minus i okay what do I do uh, yeah expand x squared minus 3x plus xi minus 3x minus xi plus now this is another imaginary uh, or complex form that I need to expand 3 times 3 is 9 minus 3i plus 3i minus i squared right what does that give me i squared is negative 1 so negative 1 times negative is positive 9 plus 1 is 10 so that back portion is 10 and what do I see usually these i terms go bye bye right so I'm left with x squared minus 6x plus 10 is what I get do I have that in here x squared minus 6x plus 10 equal to 0 I guess that's the answer right Great. Clear. Cursor. Slide up. Okay, 19. If fx is equal to this, what value does the function approach as x approaches 5? Whenever you see this approach question, this is the, the pre-calc and the calc realm, like the limit as you know x approaches 5 kind of thing. If you didn't learn this, that's fine. The, they ask you this similar question over and over again, okay? So it didn't say, what is this value when x equal to 5? It says, what is it when it approaches 5? So we're not going to get the answer. Obviously, as you can see, if I plug in 5 in here, I'm going to get 25 minus 25 over 5 minus 5, which is bad, 0 over 0. Anything over 0 is a bad. We get undefined. So as right away, if you plug it in 5, you know you're going to get undefined. So the objective of this question is quite simple. I want to get rid of that area where, you know, that approach is 5. So what do I do? 9 out of 10 times, what you need to do is you're going to factor the top. What can you do with this? Only thing you can do is factor the top. What is x squared minus 25? It looks like x plus 5 and x minus 5 on the top. And at the bottom is x minus 5. What do you think we're going to need to do? A, same thing over same thing, bye-bye, gone, right? You're left with x plus 5. And then you're going to do this x approaches 5. In, in pre-calc and calc, that's basically x approaches 5, like limit as x approaches 5. What do you do? You plug in the 5 in there now. So 5 plus 5, you should get 10 as your answer. So 10 is your answer. Now, let's say you didn't know how to do this. Then what could you do? Well, once again, the second option is use calculator, right? I, I will probably ask you to graph this. Use ca graphing calculator to graph this. You will see that it is going to be a line, right? One, two, three, four, five. My guess is that it's going to be a straight line going up. And wherever you have five, you're going to get a hole. Like this, a straight line going up with the hole at five. So when you look for value at five, you're not going to get it because there's a hole. You, you don't get the y value. But here again, what did the question say? It didn't ask you for when x equal to 5. It says, what happens when it approaches 5? So before and after, where does it approach? It will prob probably approach 10. That's why your answer is 10. Okay? Now, once again, this topic, we can talk about it on uh, in probably my different video about uh, rational functions. Okay? Number 20. Figure 3 shows a graph of fx. Okay, great. Parabola. Which of the following could be the graph of absolute value of this thing? Now, once and for all, just whenever you see absolute value, what does it do? When you see absolute value, it makes any number positive value, right? So, all these points are fine. They're all in positive realm. Positive 3, absolute value of 3 is same. So, they're all same. But what is the problem area? Right here, bottom here. When it goes down below uh, x-axis, that means these values are negative values, right? So what's going to happen? Well, when you put absolute value, all these negative values become positive. So it's going to be flipped over, right? And positive was positive. So positive, I had no problem with. Negative is going to flip over, and then positive is going to be positive. Therefore, I'm going to have this funny-looking W, right?
So the answer is, is this A? Let me scroll up and see if, yeah, the A, B, C, D, E, they're all chopped up in pieces, all gone. Your answer is A for number 20. This is the right answer. That's what it looks like. Okay, continue on my next video.